Hey, hey, welcome back. It's day three. Uh, I'm here with my campers again. I'll go and let them introduce themselves again. Hi, I'm Reva. Hi, I'm Bowen. Hi, Hi. I, I'm McKinley. Hi, I'm Keegan. All right, we've got all our campers here today. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is um, making a game about fish, if you choose a fish theme. Uh, but before we hop in, uh, let's just kind of quickly glance at some things we learned last time. So one of the big things we learned last time is that we learned how to draw, right? So we learned about these drawing tools. We're going to continue our drawing tools some this time. Last time it was for the background. And so this time we're going to draw a sprite together, uh, which should be fun. We're also going to learn like a new way of movement. Uh, so before we did Avery walking, where she followed the mouse pointer around. That was how she moved. Uh, the hedgehog moved with this up, down, left, right uh, keys. Uh, and then this time we're going to move uh, in a different way that I call um, a race car movement. We're also going to learn about something at the very end uh, called broadcasting events. Uh, so we'll get into that. Let's look at a solution uh, for what we're trying to build today. Uh, so mine is called Fish Lunch. Uh, so this version was made by Bob. Um, and the idea of this game is that you're the fish, so I'm Nemo here, uh, and Nemo's trying to eat his food. Uh, so there he just kind of made it to some food, uh, and you're trying not to let these uh, these things hit you. One feature uh, that you kind of see is I sped up Nemo there, so Nemo actually got a little faster. So I can use the up and down arrow keys, uh, and then I hit some trash, and so I got a score of three that time. Um, but you can see that there's a lot going on because we have to worry about our hero, that's Nemo, uh, we have to be able to speed up Nemo, uh, and then we also have to be able to slow down Nemo. Um, Nemo can swim backwards as well. Um, we've got the food uh, that we're going to draw, um, and then we've got all these enemies uh, that are around us as well. So don't be surprised if uh, today takes a little longer. Um, that's designed by the camp. The first day is kind of an intro. The second one gets a little harder. The third is the hardest day in general. Um, and then we start tapering down somewhere at the end. So don't be surprised uh, if you need a couple breaks in this video. Uh, but let's go ahead and dive right in uh, and go ahead and get started. So go ahead and visit uh, scratch.mit.edu, uh, uh, click on create, uh, and it'll bring you to a new project. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my theme uh, similar to what this one was, so fish themed. If you want to use a different theme, you can. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose, uh, choose a sprite. Uh, and for me, I'm going to choose a fish. Uh, so here's my fish right here. This fish is kind of interesting because he's got different costumes. Uh, so now I can delete my cat. So this fish has different costumes and sometimes costumes are like animations, uh, but you can see that this one has different costumes are just completely different fish. So I'm gonna pick the fish that I want. I really like the one that looks like Nemo. I think he's fun. So now I've got my fish on here. Um, I can change things like his size. Like maybe I want him to be a little smaller um, so I can have him be teeny tiny. Um, you can pick whatever size fish you want. Maybe 40% will be good. Just like before, uh, you can think about his directions, whether he can rotate all around or only left, right, or not rotate. This one I do want to rotate all around. All right, so now we've picked out our hero uh, and our hero is on our screen. If you did a fish, great. If you did something different, that's fine. Let's do some code. First thing we wanna add, campers, where do you think we need to start? Um, the green flag. Yeah, so event, when green flag clicks. So this is where we start uh, a lot of our games. And then eventually we're going to have a forever loop. But before we do the forever loop, um, I first want to set his starting position and his starting direction. So decide where your fish uh, or whatever your hero is is going to start your game. So I'm going to choose to start him just in the lower left corner, but you can do it wherever you want. Once you position him in that location, you can go to motion and find this go to XY. And again, uh, what's nice about this command is that if you move the fish to where you want, so here it's negative 168, negative 129, you can see that that command, the arguments, those things in whites, um, auto-update to where he's at, which is kind of nice. That's why I put him in position first before I add that command. Uh, and then I'm going to grab uh, something that says point in direction 90. This is so that my fish starts going this way uh, when the game begins. Now we're ready for our forever loop. So very common in code uh, to do something forever. Uh, forever loops are in control. Uh, and here's my uh, forever loop that I'm going to put on my fish. So a lot of these concepts are things we've seen before. Uh, we try to do this by design in games where we have these same concepts uh, over and over. 
um, and you can kind of see that there's a little bit of setup stuff at the start uh, and then a loop that goes forever. Now what I want to do forever is my fish is always swimming so I'm going to grab a move uh, and put it in here. Right now it's move 10 steps. Uh, that's going to be a little too fast. I'm going to start him at three. So move three steps. If I did run the game right now, uh, he would start swimming in a straight line, uh, which would be great. Um, if I stopped the game and I started again, he would swim in a straight line again. Uh, straight lines aren't much fun. Uh, we want to do something that's different. So I want the left arrow key and the right arrow key to let me change my direction. So uh, we want if statements. So go to control and drag over two if statements. So one uh, and then another. And what these if statements want to do is they want to say if somebody is pressing the left arrow key, then we want to rotate left a little bit. Um, then the other one's going to say if somebody's pressing the right arrow key, we want to rotate right a little bit. Uh, so we'll do, um, and we can do one together, then let you do the other. So sensing, um, if the key space is pressed, and I want to switch space to be left arrow. So if the key left arrow is pressed, then inside motion, uh, I want to do a left turn. See if you can do uh, the right turn, uh, and then see if you can try it. So right now my fish can turn to the left, um, but he really can't turn uh, to the right yet. So see if you can do that all by yourself. All right, so I added mine. Uh, so now I can go left uh, or I can go right uh, and he can swim around. Now, just for fun, um, the speed right now is always three. Um, and you'll notice that we don't need the up uh, or down arrows for this style of motion. So we're gonna add a fun feature uh, and learn a little bit about variables. So instead of the speed always being three, let's make a variable. So click on variables click on make a variable and we're going to make a variable called speed uh, that's for this sprite only. So see how there's kind of two options. It can be for all sprites. They all share the variable um, or uh, the speed is for this sprite only. So speed for this sprite only and hit OK. Now whenever we make a variable there's usually three things we need to do. Uh, we need to set its value initially. So I'm going to uh, drag a set uh, into my like starting area. So notice how it's near the top. And I'm going to set the speed to be three. So we, we made the variable. Uh, we set its initial value. Um, and then we're going to use the variable. So I'm going to go ahead and take speed and drop it into move speed steps. So with that change, it's the exact same as it was before. No, no, no change at all yet, right? But usually what we want to do with variables is we want to create them, we want to initialize their value, we want to use them, we also want to change them. So let's go ahead and do this to change it. Let's add two more if statements. Uh, add an if statement for up arrow uh, and for down arrow. So I'll go ahead and do one of them with you. So if touching um, up arrow. Well with up arrow we want the speed to go up. So I'm going to go to variables. And this time I'm going to say change uh, the variable. So change speed. And I'm going to make it go up by just a half. So I'm going to make it go up a half. So this will be kind of hard for you. Um, but we've got the key up arrow makes it go up by a half. How could down arrow make it go like down by a half? Um, so you're going to need a negative in there. See if you can do it uh, all by yourself. All right, so I got mine added. Uh, so I said, if down arrow pressed, then change speed by negative 0.5. Now let's review the code a little bit before we move on, because there's a lot of little pieces here. So when green flag click, the two motions, I think we got that. Here's what all we did with speed. We set it up to the top, make sure it says speed in your code, not my variable. By the way, sometimes I like to delete that old nasty my variable, because it just causes me problems, right? Make sure it says speed, 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 no my variables anywhere. So we set it, we use it, uh, and we modify it. Uh, I think mine's ready to go. So now my fish uh, can swim around. Now my fish kind of turns a little quick. Um, if I wanted to, I could change that, but I'm not worried about it. The thing I want to test here is, does my up arrow change my speed? Oh, it sure does. So now I'm kind of zipping and zooming. Um, I could also uh, slow down. 
So uh, it's interesting. I can actually make my fish to where he stops, which is kind of cool. Um, and then this is not really realistic, uh, but your fish can, in fact, swim backwards, right? Um, th that's fine, right? Uh, but it's a really good example uh, of variables. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead uh, and save our game. I'm going to call mine fish lunch. Um, and I think we're ready to add our next sprite. So the next sprite that we're going to add is the, uh, actually, let's put a background on first. I, my fish is swimming around in white. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, choose a background. You can choose any background uh, that's appropriate for what you want. Uh, mine's a fish, uh, so mine's underwater. So you can see I've got two good underwater options. Um, I'll just pick this one. So now I've got a background. And now what I really want to do is I want to go see uh, what my campers have picked for their, because uh, I'm sure that they did not all pick fish, right? Because they're all crazy. Uh, what they picked for their fish, uh, what they picked for their background, uh, and things like that. All right, Neela, what do you make? What do you I have going on? I made a party where the campers are trying <laughs> to get the unicorn. So she made a party with a unicorn, uh, and she's got a plan to have, like, Care Bears in there. Bowen, what did you do? I made a Draco. A Draco, that's Here, a type of gecko. Here's what I made it do. Make him fly around some. Here, I'll make him fly That's cool. So my campers uh, have a few skills that we're going to teach you today about how to get things off the internet. So Draco uh, actually came from the internet. We'll teach you how to do that today. Uh, McKinley's got a dolphin swimming around, so she's also got an underwater. She's zipping and zooming. And then Keegan, what have you got today? Minion. Uh, he's got a minion. So yeah, so he also uh, grabbed something from the internet, uh, which we will show you uh, today. All right, so the next thing we want to do is uh, make a new sprite. This next sprite is going to be our food. Uh, so you can see that we've got the, uh, the food over here. The food, what I want you to do is I want you to practice drawing for a sprite. So click on, um, or hover over, sorry, where it says choose a sprite. And in the past, we've always just clicked it, right? Well, clicking it is actually the same as choose a sprite, right? So it's the same thing. But you can also paint a sprite, uh, or you can upload an image of a sprite. This time, what I want you to do for your food is I want you to paint a sprite. So go ahead and click on Paint. Um, that will bring up the drawing canvas. Um, and what I want you to do is I want you to draw uh, your food. So for example, uh, my fish food uh, is just going to be a few brown circles. So I'm going to learn about the circle tool. So I set my color to a brown. I can decide if it has an outline or not. Maybe I uh, want a thin outline, so maybe I'll make like a really thin outline. Um, and I'll just draw a couple uh, food pellets, right? So this is just kind of fish food. You can also do things with, uh, with different colors if you want. Uh, so I can make some of them brown, um, or maybe I can make uh, another one like a, a darker green. Um, you can really just kind of draw whatever you want. There's there's no right or wrong answer uh, to, to fish food, right? So feel free to just play around a little bit uh, until you're happy with, uh, with your food. Don't worry about the size when you're drawing because the size you'll take care of um, with the size that's over here. So draw it big um, and then resize it over there. So um, go nuts uh, until you're really happy uh, with your food sprite. All right, so my campers got their uh, food drawn, some, some, some good food out there. Uh, let's go into the code uh, for the food. So this is a sprite, uh, so it's got code. Um, like most code, it's gonna start off with a win green flag clicked. It's a very common thing to do. And then the next thing I like to do is I like to set the starting position of the food, uh, but it's gonna be a little different. I want it to be different every time. So I'm actually gonna say, go to random position. So you can try this a couple times. If you want to hit the game start, you can see one time it, it showed up up here. Uh, and then I hit game start again, and it showed up way, way down there. Um, and every time you play your game, the food will start uh, somewhere different, uh, which is kind of the goal. By the way, if this fish speed is in your way, uh, you can um, you can move it to somewhere different if you want. Uh, so like maybe you can like jam it way up over here. Um, you could also change its readout, um, so you can make it like a a number readout if you wanted. So you right click on it, um, or you could change it to a slider readout, um, or you could change it to the, just the normal readout. Just letting you know that you can kind of move those around a little bit. I'm gonna jam mine in the upper right-hand corner uh, just to kind of get it out of the way. 
All right, so right now uh, your food shows up in a random spot, but when you eat the food, nothing happens, right? Um, so I want to fix that. So I want my food uh, to forever be sensing for the fish. So the food is going to check to see if the fish touches it. So I got to do it forever. So the first thing is I go to control, uh, or I add a forever loop. One mistake people sometimes make is they add on an if statement right now. Um, and that would be bad because it would just check one time and then never, never again. We want to forever check, right? So I'm going to say forever. Uh, and then I'm going to do if. And then I want to sense if I'm touching the fish. So the if part's going to be in sensing. And I'm going to say touching mouse pointer. Now, obviously, I don't want the mouse pointer, uh, but that's why that white drop down is on there. Uh, so I hit the white drop down. And now you can select the name uh, of your sprite. So in this case, in my case, it's the fish. So if I'm touching the fish, what happens? So um, I like sounds, so I'm probably gonna make some kind of sound. I'm gonna see what kind of sounds uh, this thing has by default. It's got, a, it's got a pop sound. Pop is okay, I could use pop, but if you wanna make a different sound, just click on this choose a sound down here. Um, and I always like chomp. So now I can play a pop sound or I can play a chomp sound. So now I've got those kind of like in my library, I go back to the code. So you can easily switch to sounds uh, or you can go back to code. And in code, what I want to do is I want to go sound um, and I want to put on a play or sorry, start sound chomp. Note that there's two versions. There's start the sound, which means just play it real quick and keep moving, or there's play it until done. In this case, I want to just start it because I want to immediately do something else. The next thing I want to do is I want to give them a point. Um, so we're going to keep a score. Uh, and so we're going to need a variable for score. So I've got to make another variable. So go to variables. We're like old pros at variables. You'll notice that this sprite has no variables. Um, so go ahead and click on make a variable. I'm going to call this variable score. Now the score variable is global, right? So everybody uses score. The fish increments the score. Um, other people see the score. The score is for all sprites. So that's global. So I'm going to hit OK. So now he's got a score variable. Somewhere we've got to initialize it to zero. Um, we, could do it, we could do this on either place. Um, we could do it on the fish or we could do it on the food. Doesn't matter. Um, since I'm currently looking at the code for the for the food, um, I put it on the food. So I set the score to zero to start. So the same patterns, we made it, we initialized the value. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna change it. So inside uh, the if statement, put a change score by one. And then the last thing we wanna do is we wanna move our food to a different spot. So they, they score a point uh, and then it moves on you. So go to motion um, and find go to random position. So you can see that uh, it starts at zero, it goes to random position. If the fish touches it, I make a sound, I change the score and I go somewhere new. Let's try it. So I run my code. So now whenever I get my food, it makes a chomp, I score a point, uh, and it goes somewhere new. Now since there's no enemies, the game's pretty easy, right? So I can just go pretty fast with my fish, um, and I can just chomp things away. Um, now with no enemies, uh, you can do this uh, until you get bored, uh, but eventually uh, you will get tired of collecting food uh, because it's, it's a little bit uh, too easy, right? I mean, it's still fun, uh, but, it's, but it's a little bit too easy. All right, I'm going to see how my campers are doing. Uh, I will get them caught up. Uh, show us what you've got so far. So this is Neela's. So she's got a unicorn. Um, and then she's got a um, rainbow uh, that she's uh, she's collecting. Cool. So fun, fun theme, Neela. <laughs> uh, let's see what Bowen's got. Oh, right, Bowen did a great job right, with drawing. Uh, he drew a, a little fly. Um, and he's got his Draco lizard that's flying around. Why can't um, I catch you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. it's close. Uh, and Bowen, your score isn't incrementing yet, but we'll fix that easy peasy. Okay, buddy? Okay. Uh, let's have Sissy. Let's see what you've got. 
So you've got a, uh, a dolphin uh, eating uh, a little tuna fish, right? Uh-huh. Or like a goldfish. Cool. You did a nice job. Oh, a little like orange goldfish. Nice. Keegan, what's your theme? Uh, you've got a minion uh, eating a banana. That's a pretty impressively drawn banana. I'm questioning whether you drew it all or not. Uh, but it looks uh, it looks great. Cool. Super progress, you guys. All right, I think we are ready for some enemies because our game is too easy. So I'm going to add one enemy uh, that's like from the, the library. So we've kind of discovered that you can either just click on the circle or you can click on this magnifying glass. It's the same button, right? Um, and what mine is, is my game is uh, a fish. Um, and so I'm going to add a shark. Now you can see that there's a couple different sharks here. Um, this one is like either a hammerhead shark or a regular shark. Um, and then this shark actually has like an animation. I'm going to add this shark. As you can see, it switched over to his code, which we have none. No big surprise. We're going to start with the event when green flag clicked. The next thing that I like to do is I like to set his starting position and his starting direction. Um, oh, by the way, he's a little big, so I'm going to move him to where I want him. Uh, I'm going to adjust his size if necessary. And so I'm going to have my shark always start from right here. So if I want him to always start from right there, I go to motion and I drag over a uh, go to X, Y. Again, uh, so long as you've set him there, uh, those numbers will just be correct, right? That's one thing that I love about Scratch. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to decide what direction uh, that he should point in. So he's going to just continually move in a line uh, in some direction. Now, if we ran this game right now, he would be pointing to the right, um, and eventually he's going to move. He's not moving yet. Uh, let's go ahead and make a move. So let's go Control, Forever, and then in Motion, we're going to make him move. And then this is a fun trick. Um, inside Movement, there's a very special type of movement. It says, If on Edge Bounce. Uh, this is kind of fun if on edge bounce. So right now, if you run him, uh, he's gonna point to the right um, and he's just gonna go back and forth uh, the whole time, uh, which is kind of neat, right? Now that's good. Uh, I'm happy about how things are going, but I don't want him to always go to the right. I could set a different direction for him, but I want him to go in a random direction every time. So here's what we're gonna do. Instead of saying point in direction 90, I'm gonna go to operators. And I'm going to pick a random number. Um, so I'm going to drag over this pick random. And I'm going to put it right here on point and direction. Uh, now this seems like a math lesson opportunity. Right now it says 1 degree to 10 degrees. Um, if I want all the different options, so like not just one, but all the different options so we can start in any direction, what number do I need to put here, campers? This might be a question for Keegan. Keegan, what's all the way around the circle? 180. Not 180. Different number, double that much. 360. 360. Neela got it. <laughs> Way to go, Neela. So now if I run it, uh, one time he picked that direction, uh, and then another time he picked a different direction. But this gives him a, a little bit of randomness, right? So every time you do it, uh, he goes in a different direction. All right, next thing I want to do is if I hit the fish, um, something should happen, right? So like if I hit the fish, um, the, the game should end, right? So I need an if statement. So I'm going to go into control. Uh, I'm going to take an if statement here. Um, and what I want to do is I want to sense uh, whether I'm touching the fish or not. So I'm going to say touching fish. So if I'm touching the fish, um, I want something to happen. Um, in this particular case, we're going to make something interesting happen. We're going to broadcast an event that we've hit the fish. Um, broadcasting events is something new. It's something we've never seen before. Um, but if I hit the fish, I'm going to scream to everybody, I hit the fish! Um, and then everybody can respond to it. Uh, so that way we know. So events are actually, um, well, sorry, they're in the events area. And so I want to broadcast this event. So find where it says broadcast uh, message one uh, and stick that uh, inside of here. And what I want to do here is I want to say, instead of message one, I want to broadcast a new message. 
and I'm going to broadcast a message called hit. So it's kind of crazy. I don't do anything at all inside of here. I just scream to everybody, I hit the fish, um, and then everybody can respond to it, including me, right? So including me, I can respond to this event. All right, so what we want to do is we want to um, find a event that says like when I receive hit, uh, and so it's right here. When I receive, and you can see it says uh, message one, I'm gonna switch that to hit. So everybody is gonna listen for this event. Um, and it's really no different than the green flag event. So the green flag is when they press the green flag. Uh, and this is when the event hit occurs. So what do I wanna do uh, when a hit occurs? Well, the first thing I wanna do is I want to stop my other script, right? So I wanna stop moving. So uh, that's in control. Um, and this is kind of confusing, but it's it stop all, but notice how this all has a white arrow, so you know you can change it. Um, I want to stop the other scripts. So the first thing that happens whenever somebody hits, whether it's this fish or somebody else, um, we stop um, the other script. So we're no longer running that script anymore. It's done. Now, the only thing that happens is uh, my code here. Just for fun, uh, what I want to do is I want to glide to the bottom. So uh, try this. This is going to be something new for us. Find the glide that has the X and the Y. Now, gliding to the bottom, uh, the Y is like negative uh, 180. Uh, I think that's the very bottom. And the X, um, I don't want to move my current X. So wherever I hit the fish at, from that point, I want to glide to the bottom. So the X, we actually, there's no number we could type in there. Instead, we want the variable that's called X position. So basically that means don't change my X. So from wherever I'm at, I want to glide to the bottom straight down, uh, which is at negative 180 in the Y, and I want to keep my X position the same. You can decide how long to do that. I'm going to do it over two seconds. So we're going to try our code now. We are broadcasting this hit message, but the only person so far that's listening is uh, just the shark. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. By the way, my shark is way too fast. Uh, I'll fix that. And so you can see that once, um, once I hit the shark, um, he does that fall to the bottom, right? Now, other people should also listen to this message, right? So when I hit him, he falls to the bottom. All right, so it's kind of silly uh, for the um, enemy to die, but the fish to keep right on swimming. So let's have the fish also respond to this hit event. So come over to the fish's code. And now what we want to do with the fish is we want to do the same thing. We're going to go to events. Um, and he also is going to respond to the hit event. So when I receive hit, uh, I'm going to do some things as well. The first thing I want to do is I want to stop that other script. We, that was what was moving me around. I want to stop it. That's in control. It's nor the very bottom. I think this is confusing. It's the one that says stop all. We don't want to stop all, not yet at least, um, but we want to stop other scripts in this sprite. So I want to stop all the other scripts. So that's this script right here. We're going to stop doing it. And then we're going to make a sound. Um, we're going to say like game over uh, or something like that. Now, normally what we do with sounds is we go into the sound area um, and we pick a sound. Uh, but you'll notice that there's different options here too. You can, you can choose a sound, just like you could choose uh, sprite images, um, or you could select a sound from your computer, um, or this is the one we're gonna do this time. You could record a sound. Uh, so we're gonna record a sound. So click on record. It should ask you on your computer if you wanna allow your microphone to be used. You have to say yes to that. Um, and then you're gonna click on record here. Game over. So I recorded myself saying game over. Once uh, you make a sound, you can trim uh, these sides uh, such that it kind of like matches your sound. And then you can save it. You can name it if you want, that's optional. I'm gonna choose to name mine game over. And then you can go back into the code and now you can use this sound just like any other sound. So I'm going to start sound game over um, and I'm going to play it now and see if it works. So whenever I hit my shark, who's still moving too fast, uh, where are you at, shark? Game over. It should say game over. 
So see if you can record your sound uh, and get it to say game over or whatever you'd like uh, whenever your fish hits an enemy. All right, so it says a message uh, when you when you lose the game, says your game over. Let's also have it say something uh, to put your score on the screen. So to say something like in a speech bubble, that's in looks. And so we're gonna grab the one that says, say hello for two seconds. Now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so you can see what I'm about to do. Now, instead of saying hello, I wanna say like, uh, you know, great job. Um, and then your score uh, colon. So I want to tell them what their score is. Now we did this last time too. Um, if you want to like put two strings together, it's called join and it's over in operators. So I want to find the one that says join. Uh, and I'll put it in here. Oh, and what I typed was uh, lost there. Uh, so now I'm going to type it again. Great job. Uh, score colon. And then in variables, uh, I'm going to drag over the score. So now when you uh, finish the game, so there I got one point, it says great job, score one. Mine looked pretty good. I want to say it for a little longer. I'm going to say it for five seconds just so they can kind of see their score. Um, I'm going to go help my campers type this. But before I do, the last thing we're going to add onto this script is stop all. So when the game is truly over, um, it's nice to put a stop all in there. Because you can see my green flag is still like pressed down. That's because I didn't have that stop all in there. So I'm going to do it one more time and then I'm going to help my campers. So it says great job score zero. Um, and then it actually says um, stop all after five seconds. Four seconds is probably funny. I'm going to go help my campers type some. All right, so I uh, got mine typed for everybody. So we're doing pretty good. The only thing I want to change is I want to change the speed of the enemy. Um, and I also want to change the number of enemies. Let's go play with his speed. Now what I want to do is I want the game to get progressively harder. Um, so I'm going to go into my enemy over here and I'm going to make a variable uh, and I'm going to call it enemy speed. So enemy speed is going to be shared by all the enemies. There's eventually going to be a few different enemies. So it's going to be for all sprites. So we created it like we normally do. Uh, we're going to set its value. Um, we could set its value over in the fish. We could set it in the food. It doesn't matter. I'm going to set it right here on my enemy code. And I'm going to set it to 10 to start with. And then I'm going to use enemy speed where it says move 10. And so now my speed is going to be variable. Um, I'm going to take my enemy speed and I'm going to kind of put it up over here uh, by the other speed just to kind of like smoosh them together. And so this speed can get increased um, other places in the code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the speed um, other places in the code. I'm going to increase it over where food is at. So this is a neat interaction of things. So if I go over to food, food has totally different code. Food increases the score. He's also going to change the enemy speed. So grab a change enemy speed uh, and put it right in here. And he's going to bump up the enemy speed by two. Now I know it looks like the speed's already too fast. We're making it faster. That's coming. Bear with me. Um, but it's kind of the same pattern we did before. We created the variable. We initialized the variable. We modified it in a different sprite. That's fine. Um, and then we used it in this sprite. Now what I'm going to do to slow it down is I'm actually going to go to control. Uh, and I'm going to add a weight um, of 0.1 seconds. And the reason I'm uh, adding this delay is that my sprite has costumes that he can go through. So he can kind of like go through this animation. So what I'm going to do for my sprite, uh, since she has uh, different costumes, is I'm going to drag over a next costume. If your sprite only has one costume or the different costumes don't look like an animation, you don't have to do that. Um, but what I'm going to do here is now it's going to kind of slow my guy down a little bit to start with. Um, and he's using his animation. Now what I want to do is I want to see if he speeds up. So my fish is going to grab some food pellets. Um, and so you'll notice that now the enemy speed for me is at 14, uh, 16. So he gets slowly, uh, gets faster and faster, right? Um, and so you can kind of sense that he's going faster now. Oh, and then he ate my fish uh, head on. So I'm actually pretty happy uh, with my code. Uh, I've got an enemy speed that increases. The only thing that I want to do is I want to have 
more enemies, right? Now I could go into the sprite library and I could get more enemies, but I'm gonna show you another trick. Uh, I'm gonna show you this upload sprite. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the internet. Uh, so I'm gonna go to, to Google. Um, and I'm gonna search for some type of enemy. Well, if I'm a fish in the ocean, one of my main enemies uh, is trash, right? So I'm gonna click uh, search for um, soda plastic rings. So I'm gonna looking for images. So whenever you're looking for images in Google, you click on images. And I actually want a certain type of images. I want images with transparent backgrounds. You can improve um, the search results by clicking on tools, uh, color, transparent. So you type in what you're searching for, and then you go to images. I don't want just Im any images. I want to go to tools. I want transparent background images. And so now I've got some things that I think that I want. So I think that this one looks pretty good. If it shows you this checker pattern, it's probably a transparent background. Uh, so you can right click on it and you can say save image as. I will warn you that sometimes uh, they put, they cheat, like the internet's uh, ornery, right? They put a checkerboard background on there that's not actually transparent. Now what I want to do over in Sprite is I want to say upload a Sprite. Um, and I'm going to pick my rings. Um, and so now my rings uh, are part of this. And notice that since they had a transparent background, they look really good, right? Um, I'm going to change their size. And then the nice thing about their code is that their code is almost identical to the sharks. The only thing that's different is where it starts at, right? When you have the same code, it's nice and easy. You just uh, drag it from the shark over. And I want to drag both of these things over. So now you can see my rings, uh, as soon as I zoom out some, uh, they should have the exact same code. Where's the code at? All right, I guess I'm gonna do it again. So drag this one and drop it on the rings. There, it came over. And the only thing that's different uh, is the starting position. Um, so what I like to do is I like to put it in the position that I want it, go to motion, um, and then I can see that what I really want is I want this go to X, Y. Now I can do I can do a couple of different things. I can just drop it in after this one. That would actually work fine. Um, or I can get rid of that one. Um, or I could have just changed the numbers in that one. So go add a couple of enemies. What would another good enemy be? Uh, what did I use in my, my first example? Oh, I used a water bottle. Uh, so I'm gonna say water bottle. Now one thing that annoys me about uh, Google is it, it lost my, my tools color transparent. So I have to like put that back on every time. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, and so uh, you have to try to find a good um, transparent background. Those are all pretty good water bottles. Uh, I'm just gonna accept this one, it'll be fine. Right click, save image as, um, and I'm gonna change this a shorter file name. So bottle uh, is a good short name. Um, and you can see I've already done this once. Um, and then I'm gonna come over to scratch again. I'm gonna say upload Sprite. Uh, I'm gonna pick that bottle image. Um, and if it's got a good transparent background, uh, it should show up and kind of integrate nicely with my game. Pretty common to come in huge. Uh, I'm just gonna make it a smaller size. So I think you kind of see the pattern um, and then you copy your code over from another one. Uh, so you drop it uh, in there, uh, you drop it in there. Um, and then the only thing that's different uh, about the code this time is the starting position. Uh, so go to XY, I'm gonna put that one on uh, and take that one out. So I think that I've got a finished game. Uh, so let's, let me go ahead and try it. So I can get the, the, uh, the food. I'm gonna make it full screen here. Uh, I can get the food um, and my enemies get just a little bit harder. Um, and I can speed my fish up if he's going too slow. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to uh, get the food up there. Oh, I'm in trouble. So I got two that time. Um, but I think my game is done, uh, which is cool. Um, and you can see uh, how your game plays. Ah, just won that time. Um, but it should hopefully be uh, pretty fun. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna help my campers uh, get theirs finished, uh, and then I'm gonna uh, see how they've done. I also like to click on share, by the way. It gives me a public page. Um, I like to send this link to the grandparents and things like that. All right, campers, uh, let's see how you did. All right, so you're first. So tell us what you've got. Okay. So who's your uh, who's your hero here going around? So you've got a unicorn and Care Bears, huh? Game over. 
<laughs> Nina, that's so cool. Did you decide to do those Care Bears? Uh-huh. I did all three of them. All three of them. Gotcha. That's great. And so you can see that uh, Nila has a lot of fun uh, making her game specific to her. So unicorns and Care Bears. Uh, Bowen, what's the uh, what's the theme on your game, buddy? Um, a Draco. A Draco. All right, play it's it. Let's like see it. Animals. So it's a Draco gecko, um, and he's trying to catch the fly down there. Great job. So you got a score of one, and then what are the? My score so far is two. Your score so far is two. That's your best ever. Yes. All right. So you've got the I enemies know, coming towards you. So go catch the fly again. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Great job, buddy. Nice work. All right, we'll show sissies next. So McKinley, let's uh, let's see what you've got. So you've got the dolphin going around. He's the hero, and the dolphin is catching the uh, the goldfish. And then she's got three enemies. So she's got a great white shark, an orca, so a killer whale. Cool. So you got a score of three. I love it, sissy. Really, really good. Uh, and then we got Keegan over here. Keegan, what's your game? Keegan is all minions. Uh, so he's got <laughs> play again, buddy. Let's see if you can get uh, get one. So he's got a minion, um, and then the enemies are these purple minions, so the evil purple minions. Uh, and his minion is trying to get bananas. No, this is my very last one. See. <laughs> Great job, Keegan. Took a little bit there. All right, so uh, a harder game. Uh, so this is probably going to be our hardest game in the camp. Uh, but, I mean, if you can get this uh, this working, uh, I'd be, be really impressed with your efforts. Uh, things we learned this time is each sprite uh, has its own code. Um, science and art uh, come together in this interesting way, so lots of drawing and things like this. Variables uh, can tend to be commonplace uh, and useful. Uh, and we learned a new movement style and about broadcast events. A uh, great job uh, accomplishing the video today. I'll see you next time. Bye.